If you take DV5 and you start designing websites out of the box, you are going to have a problem with consistency, maintainability, and scalability. Why am I saying this? Is that because DV is a bad page builder? Absolutely not. DV has all the tools you need to build your awesome websites. But you as the designer need to go in and set your variables. You also need to set your classes, your utility classes, and you also need to make sure that you have all your presets in place to make sure that you have a consistent website, which is very easy to maintain and also very easy to scale. Now, you may be asking, do you need to do that on every single website? Well, the answer to that is yes. And this is why we built SiteCrafter Pro. This is a design framework which has all these things that I've mentioned baked in to help you design consistent looking websites. Now, let me show you something that is very interesting here. If we take a look at this section here and this section, they may look similar and you could say, well, there's nothing wrong with them. Well, let me show you something very interesting. If we come over here and we start reducing the screen size, you're going to notice that our spacing here is consistent. And as the screen is getting smaller, the spacing also reduces in size, making everything look very consistent and very, very clean. So I'm going to continue on a little bit so you can see the big difference. In fact, let me come over here. Now, on the bottom here, I added manual values. You see that? So if we continue, you start to see that with the top one, everything here still maintains, but here we have big gaps. But on a bigger screen, it looks like everything is okay. And this is what amateur designers do. They will go in and add all their spacing and they add them as normal spacing scales, like for example, two rem or four rem and so on. That is not how you design websites in this modern day era. You need to make sure you're using clamp so that all your fonts and all your spacing is fluid. So here's the thing. The process to achieve that is to come over here to variables and you need to add all your variables in here. So you need to add the whole list of variables for your padding and also variables for your margins. But here's the thing. If you were to add all the variables here, for example, with SiteCrafter, we have over 200 lines of code. If you wanted to do that, your variables here are going to be overwhelmed. But here's the thing. The most important thing in designing is to have a workflow which is fast. And this is where SiteCrafter shines. Now, let me show you how. If I come over here and let's say we create two columns, okay? And these columns here are going to have blurbs. So I want to show you how to um, customize this blurb using the normal way. And then I'll show you how to customize it using what? Using SiteCrafter. So over here, we're going to do the same thing. Search for our blob and here is it. Blurb and here is it. Okay, so let's say the first thing we need to do is to have a really nice design here. I'm going to go in. Now, notice how many times I'm clicking to achieve my design. I'm going to come over here and then I'll probably go to my text and add a size. So I'm going to say... 1.6 rem. Okay, so that's going to be my title. And then I also need to add my text. So I'm going to come over here to body text. I'm going to set this to 1 rem. Now notice how many times I'm making all the uh, changes and updates. Next, I also want to add a bit of padding around this. So I'm going to go to spacing. And for my padding, uh, I think 2 rem will do. How about that? At this point, I'm just guessing because I'm just trying to work out what looks great. So I have no spacing scale and I'm just guessing throughout this. Next, we're going to add a background color. So I'm going to come over here and I need to add a gray, a grayish color. Okay, there we go. I think I'm going to go with that. And I've just noticed that with this, the spacing on the bottom here is missing. So I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to say 2 rem on the bottom as well. Okay, that's looking great. I'm also going to need some rounded corners. So I'm going to go into border. And then for my rounded corners here, I'm going to say uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 rem. 
Okay, so I've got a sl um, very slight rounded corners there. Great. And then finally, I need to add my image in here. So I'm going to go to image and icon. And let's choose our image right here. Okay, great. So I've just completed my design. But <laughs> let me show you how I can achieve this in a much better way using SideCrafter. So same thing. I'm going to come over here. Go to advanced attributes and then I'm going to create an attribute and my attribute here is going to be a CSS class. So I'm going to go in and type CSS class. And by the way, you only need to do this once and that's it. So here the attribute is class. So the first thing I'm going to do and notice what I'm go what's going to happen here. The first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that my font is fluid. So I'm going to add SK and because that's my um, uh, utility for my fonts. Okay. The next thing I'm going to add is the padding. So I'm going to say P and look at all the spacing here. I can choose medium, large, and so on. And all this is based on a scale. So I'm going to say padding. And then I'm also going to add a background color. So I'm going to say BG. And because I've used gray there, I'm going to say gray. And I'm going to go with gray 200. Now, if I see that gray 200 is not great, I can just always go in and say gray 300 or maybe 400 to just to match um, what I have there. Okay, so I also need to add some rounded corners. So I'm going to say radius. And for my radius, I want to go with medium. Yep, I think medium works fine. So, so far, so good. Now, notice that I've just added one, two, three, four classes and pretty much that has given me the design that I want. So this in itself is a way of designing which makes it very, very consistent. If I at any point want to change this, I can just go in and change it right here. Now, if you have a design team, they only have to master this. They don't even have to go in and do inline editing. And that's the power of uh, SideCrafter Pro. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to close out of here, add my image. So I'm going to come over here. Let's go to our image. So here's our image and icon. And this time I'm going to go with this one. Hopefully it's a square. Oops, it's not a square. Let's look for a square so we can have a similar layout. I'll tell you what, let's just use the image that I used here. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and save. Again, I'm going to do my tests. And I want you to notice what happens when we start scaling this and making our design smaller. Okay, now watch what happens here. Do you see that my spacing there is consistent on this? I know it's not a big difference. All right, let's make it nice and small. Okay, so you can see the top one here. I mean, it's more apparent when we look at the bottom one. The bottom one is the one that uses SiteCrafter and the top one is the one that does not, doesn't use SiteCrafter. So you can see here, the spacing is not as good. But here, as my screen gets smaller, my spacing gets smaller as well, but it's according to scale. And this is very, very important. So what I've just demonstrated here is a way to design your modules in a very, very easy way. Now, you may be thinking, well, is that just the model, the modules, even the sections? So if I come over here to my section setting, I can always go to advanced attributes. And like before, I'm going to say CSS class. And over here on the attribute name, I'm going to say class. Now I can add padding on my sections, which is very uh, uniform and also looks great on all devices. So I'm going to say section and I'm going to go with medium. Okay, so now I have my medium padding and then I can just close out of here. Now, there's a quick way to um, make changes to this using the new feature here, which is called inspector. So all you need to do is to right click, choose inspect. And now you can go to attributes and you can quickly go in and make some changes. So let's say, for example, you want to change this gray to a primary color. So we're going to say BG PRI for primary. And we're going to go with primary 100. 
okay? Look at that. Just by doing that, I was able to change my color. But if I wanted to do the same over here, I will select this, go to background, and then I'll start looking for the color to change this. Or I can right click, inspect, and I think this is a fair way of dealing with this, by the way. So now I'll have to go in here. Somewhere, somehow, I'll have to have a bunch of colors here that I need to select from in order for me to get the color that I want. So that's going to be the challenge here. So now I have to perhaps maybe play around with uh, my lightness. But the lightness here in the framework is already calculated for you. So this uh, way of designing is much, much faster. But you see, the advantage of this is, let's say you have a team of designers and you want them to design your website. Well, let me show you something very interesting here. I'm going to exit, save and exit. All your design team has to do is to come over here to dashboard and then they want to come over here to site crafter. This is where when they want to choose, let's say colors that work well together, they can just click on style guide and then over here they can, you know, adjust the colors like that. The saturation, the lightness, Okay, you see that? So let's say this is going to be our primary color. The primary color here will be PRI 500. So that's how the framework identifies the primary color. You do the same thing here. You add all these colors to uh, the file and um, the framework picks it up and it's very, very easy to uh, select your colors as you're designing. The second thing is your reference. So if you come over here to reference, I know we've uh, talked about so many uh, so many utility classes. So if you want text X S that's text extra small. So we have a bunch of them. We have font weights. We have padding utilities. We have, um, sections. We have margins. We have grids, radius, shadows, so, I mean, there's a lot to choose from. Look at the background colors here. So all these are utility colors ready for you to just go in and plug them in and continue designing. Whenever you need to reference this, you can come over here, text, text accent 100. You know, if I go back and let's say we go back to our page, all pages, I can literally add my text module like that decide what I want to do with this text. Is it going to be a title? Is it going to be just a heading? And I can have a custom heading just, just based on that. So I can always go to my advanced attributes and CSS class. And by the way, you only have to do this once. You don't have to do it all the time. Okay. And I want to say SK heading. So maybe I want like a really nice heading. So SK and you can see here, we have different sizes. Look at that. So with that now, I can choose my font weight. So I'm going to say font. Uh, if I re want it really, really bold, I can say font 700. Do you see that? And then I can choose my color. So I've got three colors to choose from. Either the primary color, the, the accent color, or the grayscale. So this time I want to do something different. I'm going to say text accent and then I'm going to go with accent 500. Okay, you see my color there. Now if I went off, I want to make it darker for whatever reason, 900. Do you see that? Now you may be thinking, well, this font here, I mean, what's so special about it? Well, it is fluid out of the box. Okay, you don't have to uh, worry about entering its sizes and uh, stressing about, oh, is it going to be responsive and so on and so forth. Check this out. If I do that, look at the size. It's getting smaller and smaller and it's fitting really, really well in my design. You see, now it's going bigger and now it's big. So this is the power of using a design framework such as Site Crafter. Out of the box, you will not have um, easier to maintain websites using DV5. This is the best way. And you can see here, the colors look beautiful. You don't have to guess the colors that you're working with. You're working with colors that are in the design system already. Anyway, 
that's my first introduction to why use Sidecrafter and why it is important. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.